welcome to the network and cyber security lecture series myself darshan bidi assistant professor department of ece sjb institute of technology bengaluru the network and cyber security subject code is 17ec835 this subject is professional elective for 8th semester students in this subject we are going to study the network security concepts and also a cyber security concept it consists of five modules first three modules covers the network security concept and another two modules covers the cyber security concept module 1 is transport level security in that we are going to discuss web security consideration security socket layer transport layer security https and secure shell protocols first considering the web security consideration in that we are going to study web security threat and different web traffic security approaches in secure socket layer we are going to study the secure socket layer architecture secure socket layer protocol stack and secure socket layer record protocol operation then we are going to study the chain cipher script protocol alert protocol and hashing protocol operations in transport layer security we are going to study the hash function and some cryptographic function next hypertext transport protocol for secure in that we are going to study the connection initiation and connection closure operation next secure shell is called as ssh in that we are going to study study ssh protocol stack consider https https stand for secure hypertext transfer protocol in that so https is the combination of hypertext transfer protocol so or a secure socket layer okay it's combination of secure socket layer and http so it provides the secure communication between the web browser and the web server so nowadays uh, whichever the the browsers we are going to use so all browsers are using that the https protocol it provides the secure communication between the client and the, the server because the client is communicating to the server using the browser okay, the https capability is built into all modern web browsers it use depends on the web server supporting https communication so for example search engines do not support https the principal difference seen by a user of a web browser is the url you can say that the uniform resource locator we are going to use that that address this begin with the https rather than http so in the old days that we are going to use that the http so https is that is secure path from browser to the server so we are going to use normally for the hypertext transfer protocol connection use port is 80 but https secure hypertext transfer protocol is specified the port number is the 443 so which invokes that secure socket layer also when we are going to use hypertext transfer protocol for secure purpose So the following, uh, the details of following elements are encrypted. The first one to consider is first one is URL of the requested document. That URL of the requested document will be encrypted. Next is content of the document. That is also going to encrypt. Next content of browser forms filled in by browser user. And I am going to use a Gmail. means a google so i am going to use 
a the browser that internet explorer i am going to use so in that the browser i am going to fill some forms that i am going to log into that the browser using my the credential so in that when i am going to fill the forms that content is also going to be encrypted cookies sent from browser to server and from server to browser so all cookies going to encrypt then the content of http header the content of hypertext transfer protocol header that part is also encrypted so these are some advantages you can see over an http so https is the combination of http and secure socket layer so that when you are going to use uh, hypertext transfer protocol so these are the informations or elements are going to encrypted next so https is documented in rfc 2818 http or transport layer security there is no fundamental change in using http or either ssl or tls because secure socket layer and transport layer security so are one other same that so and the both implementation are referred to as a https either we can use http over an ssl and http over an tls so both we can use http over an is secure socket layer and http over an transport layer security in hypertext transfer protocol concerning the connection initiation and connection closure parameters so first concern the connection initiation so in that we are going to establish the connection between the browser and the server so considering that the hypertext transfer protocol the agent acting as a http client and also acts as a tls client so when i am going to use http over ssl and http over transport layer security so here when i go to consider http client and also acts as a tls client the client initiates the connection to a server on the appropriate port and then sends tls client allow to begin a tls handshake so when i go to initiate the connection the client has to send the message to the server so that's like a client allow message suppose tls client we are going to use means tls client allow to begin the tls handshake once the tls handshake has finished the client may then initiate the first http request means the connection established means that handshake has finished means so for that uh, the client allow message we are going to get the acknowledgement from the server so after finished that so the client may going to initiate the first http request all http data is to be sent as tls application data so we are going to use tls client so that tls application data we are going to use normal hypertext transfer behavior including retained connection should be followed that the retained connection should be followed in that there are three levels of awareness of a connection in secure hypertext transfer protocol considering that at the http level first level we are going to consider http client request a connection to a http server by sending the connection request to the next lower level so when you are going to connections happen between the client and server first it's going to send the request to the next lower layer the next lower layer is tcp consider as a transmission control protocol so but it is also may be a transport layer security or secure socket layer consider that this level 
the transport layer security a session is established between the tls client and the server so this session can be support one or more connections at a time so because when you are going to consider the session means so in that session we are having multiple collections so you cannot consider that only one connection is there in the one session we are having multiple session means multiple connections in the single session we have seen a tls request to establish a connection begin with the establishment of tcp connection between the tcp entity on the client side and tcp entity on the server side that's going to happen so the connection is established between the client and the server so that the session will be start so in the session we are having multiple the connections so after the communications happens that we need to close the connections we need to close one connections one by one then after that the all the connections are closed means the session will closed so for that we are going to consider the the connection closure http client or a server can indicate the closing of a connection by sending the following line that is considered the the connection close we are going to use a http record is the connection close so this indicates that the connection will be closed after this record is delivered so what are going to do the server is going to send the connection close so once this record is received that the connection will be the closed the closure of an http connection requires a transport layer security close the connection with the peer tls entity on the remote side which will involves closing the underlying tcp connection so when you are going to communicate with the lower layer means you are going to communicate with the tcp transmission control protocol we need to the close that the connection at the transport layer security the proper way to close the connection is for each side to use a tls alert protocol to send a close notify alert so when you are not closing that if the the connection is established you are already transferred the information we are going to initiate that the connection close if the connection is not closing means in that the tls alert protocol to send a close notify alert so we are going to get the close notify alert if you are not closing if you are not closing the connections next the transport layer security implementation must initiate an ex exchange of closure alerts before closing a connection that tls the implementation may after sending a closure alert close the connection with waiting for the peer to send the closure alert so we are going to complete that we are going to incomplete means so we need to close that so for that we are going to get the alert message that http clients also must be able to cope with the situation in which the underlying tcp connections is terminated with a prior close notify alert and without a connection close okay so they may send they may send the close notify message once once the connection is established once the communication is over they can cut the connection that they may send the close notify so alert and without a close connection that close connection indicator so such situation could be due to programming error on the server or a communication error that causes the tcp connection to drop means we need to consider that the connection close indications happens then only we need to send the close notify messages means close notify alerts that so means without the close connection should not send the close notify alerts next 
So unannounced TCP closure could be evidence of some sort of attack. Unannounced means that uh, the connection close is not announced. Then also we are going to close the TCP closure could be evidence of some sort of attacks which happens. So that hypertext transfer protocol client should issue some sort of security warning so when you are going to occur this. So that's why so secure hypertext transfer protocol is a secure protocol. So next topic is secure cells. We can call it as SSH. Secure shell is a protocol for secure network communication designed to be relatively simple and inexpensive to implement. It's also a, a protocol for the secure network communication. So designed simple way and inexpensive to implement. So consider the initial version SSH1 was focused on providing a secure remote login facility to replace the telnet and other remote logon schemes that provided no security. When you are going to connect the remote connections, remote login facility, so it's going to provide security in that the initial versions. Secure shell also provides a more general the client server capability and can be used for such network functions as file transfer and email. For that email and a file transfer, we are going to use the secure shells. A new version, so SSH1 is the starting version, initial version. SSH2 is the next version, fixes a number of security flaws in the original scheme. Consider the secure shell. The client and server applications are widely available for most operating systems. It has become the method of choice for remote login and X tunneling and is rapidly becoming one of the most pervasive application for encryption technology outside the embedded system. Considering the secure shell is organized as three protocols that is typically runs or an TCP considering TLS the transport layer security then is connection protocol and we are going to use authentication protocols consider the secure shell protocol stack in this slide we are going to consider that the internet protocol in the first layer internet protocol provides Datagram delivery across multiple networks. So consider the transmission control protocol. Transmission control protocol provides reliable the connection oriented end to end delivery. In the transmission control protocol, first the connection is established between the client and server. After that, so the data will be transferred. So above the TCP. So in that secure shell, the three protocols going to run that. The three protocols are the transport layer sec protocol, user authentication protocol, and the connection protocol. In the transport layer protocol, secure shell transport layer protocol, it provides a server authentication, confidentiality, and integrity. So it also provides the compression operation. So in that, when you go to you are going to authenticate, so it provides the confidential. So whichever the data we are going to send from client to server, so that data will be confidential. Then integrity, that the data will not change and not alter. So move on to the user authentication protocol. In the user authentication protocol, it authenticates the client side user to the server. User going to authenticate to the server. In the connection protocol, in connection protocol multiplexes the encrypted tunnel into several logical channels that we are going to consider in the, the connection protocol. So this so 
figure gives the entire the sequential operation considering that main three protocols works on the sequential is transport layer protocol provides the server authentication data confidentiality data integrity with forward secrecy then user authentication protocol authenticate the user to the server that should be happen at the client side in connection protocol so it multiplexes the multiple logic connection channels over a single channel the connection so it's going to multiplex the connections consider the transport layer protocol there we are going to use host keys the server authentication occur at the transport layer based on the server processing a public or private key pair whether you are going to use public key pair or private key for the encryption and decryption so the server may have multiple host keys using multiple dif different asymmetric encryption algorithm multiple hosts may share the same host keys so we are having multiple host means multiple keys will be there so that so may be share the same host key for all suppose the server host key is used during the key exchange to authenticate the identity of the host for this to be possible the client must have a prior knowledge of the server's public host key so without the public key we cannot so generate that the particular the session key that consider the packet exchange packet exchange in the secure shell the sequence of events in the secure shell the transport layer protocol first one consider that the client establishes the tcp connection to the server so once it's done the tcp protocol and is not part of the transport layer protocol once the connection is established means the client and server exchanges the data so like a so data means that is in the form of packets so in the data fields of the the tcp segments so each packet having a unique format so we are having means the constant format okay that we are going to we are going to discuss that the packet format in the packet format we are having the following fields so that's the packet length padding length payload and random padding so consider the packet length length of the packet in bytes not including the packet length and the max field padding length length of the random padding field we are going to use payload that is the original information that so useful content of the packet that we are going to consider in the random padding once an encryption algorithm has been negotiated so this in the random padding field we are going to the consider so it contains the random bytes of padding so that the total length of the packet is a multiple of the cipher block size so or you can consider 8 bytes of a stream cipher then so cipher means the the plain text we are going to convert into cipher text that we are going to consider a cipher block size that we are going to get the multiple of the cipher block size consider the sequential transport layer protocol packet exchanges so in that the packet will be exchanged between the client and the server so initially the connection is established between the client and server consider as a established tcp connection so after that going to exchange the identification string that is called as authentication the client and server both authenticate and going to uh, send the certificate the certifications then in the algorithm negotiation is happens uh, between the client and server then key exchange function the key exchange function from client to server so in that so we are going to 
send the new keys from client to server so whichever the keys they are going to use for the say, encryption and description purpose so they are going to exchange them then after the end of the key exchange so it is going to do the service request for that so the client is going to request the server so we are going to send the message in the form of message service request afterwards the data will be exchanged so this is the procedure to exchange the packet from the client to server so in this slide we are going to discuss in the secure shell transport layer protocol how the packet will be formed so the formation of the packet we will discuss starting we are going to consider payload so payload is nothing but your so exact information that information we are going to compress it means compressing means reducing the data size after that the compressed payload we are going to use so for that we are going to add the sequence number packet number then padding then padding information here pdl gives the padding length how much we need to do padding that we are going to the form so here we have for the encryption purpose we are going to use the packet length and padding length so this pktl and pdl length. so how much what is the size of the packet that is indicated by the packet length and padding length then the compressed payload and padding we are going to use for the encryption purpose you can see here so from packet length padding length compressed data or payload and padding so this information we are going to encrypt so that is called as cipher text cipher text is nothing but encrypted information so converted data so raw information payload is nothing but plain text so plain text is going to convert into cipher text so afterwards considering the sequence number entire the uh, information encrypted information plus sequence number so that information we are going to put it into mac so mac is nothing but message authentication code okay then so that the complete so information is the ssh packet secure shell packet okay so this is the how the packet is going to form so before sending that packet message authentication code mac with the message authentication has been negotiated this field contains the mac value the mac value is computed over the entire packet plus sequence number excluding the mac field means how the mac value is calculated the mac value is calculated considering the entire packet whichever the information we are going to encrypt that entire packet plus sequence number that we are going to consider in the mac field the sequence number is an implicit 32 bit packet sequence that is initialized to zero for the first packet and incremented for every packet and our sequence number that gives the packet number that gives 0 1 2 3 like that and you are going to form a packet the sequence number will be in the incrementing that is the incremental order the sequence number is not included in the packet sent over the tcp connection because we are going to consider we are going to encrypt only uh, the packet length padding length payload and the padding information we are not going to uh, encrypt the sequence number that's why sequence number is not included in the packet sent over the tcp connection thank you